Can you shoot raw video on almost any Android phone? Yes, thanks to the new Motion Cam app, it's possible. It lets you shoot cinematic raw 4K video and convert to cinema DNG files for editing. Let me show you how with the Xiaomi Poco F3 and DaVinci Resolve. Skip to this time if you just want to see the video footage comparison. Otherwise, head over to the Play Store or GitHub and install Motion Cam. Before you start recording, you might want to adjust a few settings. Select Photo at the bottom because this setting menu isn't available from the raw video mode in the settings menu. I up the raw video memory usage slider to 2000 megabytes. I tried going higher, but the app would always crash. I only have 6 gigs of RAM on this Poco F3, and it basically seems like the more RAM the app can use, the higher the frame rate you can consistently record at. Just make sure that any RAM extension options are turned off in your phone settings, since that actually hurts performance. There are other settings that I'll dive into deeper in another video, but let's check out the options for raw video mode. The Poco F3 Sony IMX582 sensor doesn't have optical image stabilization, so it makes no difference whether this is on or off. You can't add a histogram or focus peaking yet, though the developer is working to add those features in the coming months. But you can use the sensor clipping overlay to see if you're terribly under or overexposed. I shot most of this footage at 30 FPS, but 60 FPS sort of works on the F3 as an unsupported frame rate, except for this weird glitch at the bottom that's always present when I shoot in 60. Also, you need to use auto mode to truly record at 60 FPS. I'm not sure why that is, but there you go. Unfortunately, 120 FPS just doesn't work on the F3 for right now. You also might want to adjust the resolution to 4K from the native resolution that motion cam picks up from the camera sensor. Let's look at a few comparisons between the stock Poco camera's H.264 footage and the raw DNG files from Motion Cam. This first clip is just a dark hallway, and you can tell that the Poco F3 will need some stabilization help when using Motion Cam. This shot is quite underexposed, but after I apply a few corrections, we end up with something like this, and we start to see an issue with noise that can be corrected within the app, which we'll look at shortly. For these bushes, I underexposed again. I could really use that histogram in this app, but you can see how much data Motion Cam picks up in the shadows that's just totally lost from the stock Poco camera app. And yes, it's noisy for now. Here's the selfie camera. Just to show that motion cam can be used on all the F3's cameras, and motion cam beats the Poco Cam selfie shooter easily. Better detail, better highlight control, just a much improved shot besides the noise. If this video has been helpful so far, please give it a like and thank you for that. The pink marker in the leaves behind a fence shot has promised too. It doesn't suffer from the blown highlights like the Poco camera, and with a few adjustments, it looks much better. Except that I forgot to lock exposure. Check out the shadow detail in the trees for this sky shot. Fantastic. And I honestly can't believe how much better this chrome pipe shot looks. You're giving up some sharpening, but you could always adjust that in DaVinci Resolve as well if you like. I grabbed my Moza MX gimbal for these next shots, and it certainly helped with stability. Here's some mud, and what I think is a dog collar, maybe. Same shot here, but I switched to the Pixel Bend 1080 resolution. I tried this shot in 60fps set to auto, and there's that weird persistent glitch at the bottom, but I'll just crop in. Again, 60 FPS for this flower shot, and if you want to see a motion cam versus Filmic Pro comparison using the OnePlus 10 Pro, S22 Ultra, and Google Pixel 6, please leave a comment and subscribe to the channel, because I will try to make that soon. 60 FPS again while I walk through this parking lot. And here's a very rusty AC fan, also in 60 FPS. This is the selfie camera at 30 FPS, this time with the gimbal, so much more stable. Here's that same walkway with the gimbal and the main camera, and I have not stabilized any of these shots in this video with DaVinci Resolve, just the gimbal. So how do we get footage off of our phone and onto a computer to edit? You can either convert to DNGs on your device by hitting this convert button, or you can just move the container files from your phone to your computer, which is what I chose to do. I just loaded them on a Samsung T7 SSD and edited from that SSD on my 2020 M1 MacBook Pro. I would use the Motion Cam Tools app, which you can download from the Motion Cam GitHub for Windows or Mac, to convert the containers. Once you're in the Motion Cam Tools, Tools app, you can finally get rid of almost all that noise by stacking frames. For example, this shot is from the main camera with the ISO at 50, and since I'm shooting at 30 FPS, the shutter speed is 160. Here's the base file, here's a crazy grade to exaggerate the noise on each file, and here's the output from stacking 4 frames, noticeably better. Here's 12 frames stacked, and here's the max 16 frames stacked. Here's another shot, but at 500 ISO. And after the initial four stack frames, there's not much of a difference. Stacking frames doesn't seem to have a huge impact on overall sharpness, and I'm pretty pleased with it. But how long does it take to convert the files? This file of 566 frames and a container size of 2.99 gigs takes a minute and 14 seconds to convert without frame stacking on my 2020 MacBook Pro. Four stack frames, three minutes and four seconds. 16 stack frames, seven minutes and 15 seconds. If you decide you just want to convert on your phone, you're looking at two minutes and 56 seconds 
without stacking, and an enormous 22 minutes and 29 seconds if you choose to stack 16 frames. You can save some time if you don't compress the files as long as you have enough storage, and stacking 16 frames without compression only takes 6 minutes, 16 seconds, saving you an entire minute, which is significant if you were converting a much larger file. The size difference is enormous though. Compressed, that file is 3.53 gigs. Uncompressed, it's 9.42 gigs. Ouch. I would say if you expose your shots correctly, you can generally get away with 4 or 8 stack frames. Of course, you can preview your results on the computer app to get an idea of how many frames you will need to stack. I'm a huge fan of Motion Cam, and I can't wait to see where it goes from here. I'm working on a comparison between Filmic Pro and Motion Cam using the OnePlus 10 Pro, Pixel 6, and S22 Ultra, which will be linked here when it's done. So, please subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and feel free to comment with any questions you might have, and I will answer them perfectly every once in a while.